Hello, Blake Root is here with F64 Academy and F64 Late, and today we're going to take a look at the very brand new Photoshop CC 2020 Remove Background feature, and we're going to compare it to the Select Subject feature. Now, you might think that this Remove Background feature is like the new wizardry of 2020. It's going to solve all of your selection problems. Well, I got news for you. All right, so when Photoshop CC 2020 updated, there was a new feature in there called Remove Background, and it really is awesome. It's a feature that essentially, when you press the button, it removes the background from the image, and your subject comes forward, and you have no background. And it's like, whoa, this is awesome. We've been dying for something like this in Photoshop. But what I'm going to do today is I'm going to dissect uh, this Remove Background thing and the Select Subject thing and show you kind of some best practices for using both. So this image right in front of you here is one of those images that everyone would say, oh, Blake, you picked the perfect image to this remove background on. Um, there's nothing that could be a problem in the background. This image, same thing, minus some maybe some flyaway hairs, but this photo is where things get really tricky. So we're gonna put this remove background to the test and talk about some of our best practices for using it and why you might use a select subject instead. So with this first one, if you wanna use this remove background, this is what I suggest you do. Make sure that your properties are set up so you can see your properties in your layers. If you don't have it set up that way, go to window and then click on properties. And when you do that, it should come up with a little flyaway that's going to come out here. If you don't already have it selected, mine is already in here, so it's not going to do that. But you might have it kind of fly away out here. Well, grab that and bring it right into here because you're going to be using it a lot more these days. I tend to put it right between history and my libraries, and then I have properties right in the middle. So right, right here, what this new properties panel does, it gives us a lot of information about the file that we're working with. It tells us our width and our height. And we can even change the size right here, which is really awesome. Uh, it tells us about our rulers and guides and whether we might have any on there, or we can put some on there if we'd like. We can put the ruler tool uh, along the top. Instead of pressing Command or Control R, we just click that button and it's now there. We can make guides. Uh, but one of the things that I want to show you here is that if you click this little lock icon, it's going to go from a background layer to now a layer that can be edited, okay? So now your properties tab is gonna change. It's gonna give us some of those transform options, but it's not gonna give us the guides and all the other things that we had before. But it is gonna give us this remove background and select subject. If I press remove background, Photoshop's gonna just knock out that background as if it didn't even exist. And you might think that's awesome. So let's say I want to put him on a different background. I've got this brick wall here. I'm going to grab this brick wall, just drag it and drop it into here, into this photo here, and put it in behind him. And then I will press Command or Control T to move it so that now he's in front of a brick wall instead of the office corporate background that he's in before. Kind of out of place. But one of the reasons why I wanted to show you this is because this remove background is great if what you're going to put behind it is very similar to what you had in the background to begin with. And what I mean by that is if we look here, uh, the original image had this whitish uh, kind of like bokeh behind him. Well, this brick wall has white in it. So one thing we can't see until we maybe put him behind, I don't know, let's say this wooden wall. I'm just going to move this here, put that right there, and then press Command or Control. I don't even have to press Command or Control T, and you can see already see exactly what it is that I'm talking about. Now, here's the problem. His hair. His hair still has the white stuff in between it. So yes, it removed the background, did a great job of doing it, but what it didn't do was help us too much with the, the white that's in between the hair and the background. So while the remove background feature is great, it's gonna come with the cost. Now, if we're putting him on a white brick wall like this, it's not really gonna matter, and you're not even really gonna be able to tell. But if we put him on this, on a background that has a much different contrast, you're definitely gonna be able to see it, okay? So the same is true for an image like this. Hey, real quick before we continue, if you haven't subscribed yet, please do so. When I create these tutorials, you'll get notified if you click that little bell. And then anytime I create a new video, you'll be the first to find out about it because I love making these things and I really enjoy seeing your progress in Photoshop. Okay, let's get back to it. If we were to click the lock on here and remove the background, this is going to do a phenomenal job of remo removing this background. And even if we were to maybe put her behind that wall now, we'll open up that wall and just move her behind there. Bring this on down behind her, like so, and Command or Control T. Again, if we have a white background, it's not too bad because she's on a grayish white background to begin with. 
we'd have to do some finagling here. Maybe, maybe even put like a gradient map on here or something like that to color grade this to maybe match what she was uh, on before. Right here, so something like this might be good. We drop that opacity a little bit there. Kind of gives it that grayish background that she might have very similarly been on before. But what it's not doing is it's not grabbing all of her flyaway hairs. And those flyaway hairs in this case kind of show direction here. If we zoom in back here, and we click off that mask, you can see that it didn't grab the flyaway hairs. So the remove background isn't necessarily the best thing to use uh, for an image like this either. Now, it does a decent job, and you could probably fool most viewers, but there's a lot of leading lines here that are gonna tell another viewer that, hey, they replaced this background, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you how it would uh, happen to work on an image like this. Again, we'll take the lock off of this background layer, and we'll press remove background, and we'll see what happens. Does Photoshop do a good job? Well, we've got some feet missing, um, definitely removes all the, the, the leaves in front of them, but now it puts them completely out of context and we have no idea where these people uh, even are because feet are missing, uh, part of the dog is missing here, and that just doesn't really fly very well. You don't wanna cut off body parts when you're removing a background, okay? So this is where I would use the select subject feature. Uh, the select subject feature in combination with the select and mask feature. Now, if you are not familiar with select and mask, uh, it's a phenomenal tool built right here into Photoshop and it's relatively simple to use. So the best course of action, my personal opinion, remove background while it's great, still does not solve all of our problems. And will I use it? Probably not. Because with this select subject, if I press select subject, it's going to do its best job of finding the subject, which is actually the exact same clip that it would have done if we said remove background. It's the same thing. Okay, so select subject is now basically what it's doing when you say remove background, it's doing the select subject and giving you a mask. It's a very quick select subject, but it doesn't give you the ability to refine it too easily. So I'm gonna press select subject again. And then if we have any of our selection tools enabled, so that would be uh, maybe this guy right here, the marquee tool, we can have this select and mask right here. So I'm gonna click select and mask. And when I have select and mask, this is where people usually freak out because it's a different pain, uh, editing pain, and things disappear and you're like, oh no, what do I do? Well, there's a couple things that'll make this easier for you. First things first, you have some tools over here. This tool is basically the quick selection tool, the tool that you would find in Photoshop to make a selection anyway. It's just built right here into this editing panel. This tool right here is the Refine Edge Brush, which is phenomenal for getting those flyaway hairs or anything that might be a stray or a miss in the image. This one right here is the Brush Tool. These ones, I don't use them a whole lot when I'm in Select and, and Mask, to be honest with you. The only two you're really gonna need are these two right here. Now, the other thing is, what view do you want it on? Now, sometimes the onion skin view is good because you can see what it looks like on the background as you increase or decrease the transparency behind it, which can be really helpful to see what parts you might be missing. Um, another way to do this is to do it with the uh, red overlay, which the red overlay will also do a good job of showing you what parts you might be missing, like the feet and so on and so forth here. Um, if you have layers behind them and you do this on layers, it's really cool. You can see exactly the uh, modifications you're gonna get to this group of people with the new background behind them. But for this case, I'm just gonna do this overlay here because this one's really good for, for seeing this. Uh, one of the things that we can do is adjust the opacity here. We can also change the color of this. So I'm gonna change the color of this to a magenta color because sometimes we will actually see red in our image, whereas magenta is not quite as, uh, as noticeable. And if we increase the opacity, this really starts to show us really well what we're missing, and it'll even show us even better how we're refining it. So if you get yourself set up this way, boom, you are on point. Now, what I'm gonna do before I do any image refinements is I'm gonna press this Smart Radius button. And the Smart Radius, and you set this to maybe like three or four pixels, if you have that radius and the Smart Radius on, what it does, it just helps kind of grab some of the stuff that you you'd wanna grab, like the flyaway hairs. It's just a really smart rendering of the areas around the object that it is that you're trying to gather. Okay, so what I wanna do here with this, especially with this, is get some more of the foreground on there. So if I grab this tool right here, this is the quick selection tool. If I start painting around this with the small brush, it's gonna take very small areas. If I make this brush larger, 
it's going to give me a much bigger selection and really help me out here. So I, I get all that stuff in there that was missing, you know, the part of the dog there, and, and that looks pretty good, okay? So now we've got that selected there, but what we don't want is this background here. So how do we get rid of that background? Well, uh, one of the ways we can do that is if we press the Alt or Option key while we make this brush smaller, Alt or Option, and click inside here, it's going to make sure it doesn't grab those areas. Now we want the leash of the, of the dog to be there, so I'm gonna make this brush smaller, press Alt or Option, and then click there. And if it grabs the leash, that's okay. Let's zoom in here. And now with my brush a little bit smaller, I'm gonna go ahead and just brush that on. If you wanna zoom in and zoom out really easily in this, in this editing pane, you press Control and Spacebar. There's also a magnifying glass right here, but the Control and Spacebar key will make it so that you get in and out of there really quick. So there's another area here that's a problem. So I'm gonna press Alt or Option because I don't want this to be a part of that. I want that to be out of there. Ah, but look what happens. Now it's grabbing some of his face and maybe some of his shirt. So I need to select this area here. Now, this is where the Refine Edge brush is really going to be your best friend. So if we take the Refine Edge brush, which is right here, we click on this Refine Edge brush. This is going to do a really good job of helping us keep some of those hairs in there. There we go. Just kind of click around a little bit here until that magenta starts to go away. I'm going to grab my quick selection tool here and then just plus on this one too. And that looks pretty good. Make sure that the hair is in there. Okay, pretty good. Again, we're losing some of this area here. This is where this can kind of be a pain in the butt, but that's okay. We'll just press Alt or Option again to cut that away. All right. And then we'll zoom back out. So I'm going to zoom in back here just on their heads like here, right about here. You can see that there's some flyaway hairs that are up there. I'll press the space bar key so I can move this around. If we grab the Refine Edge brush, this is where the Refine Edge brush really shows its power. If we go ahead and just brush in here like this, you see that? It's going to start grabbing more of that hair and really refining this selection. And we want to do that around hair, definitely around hair. Not so much around, um, you know, clothing unless there's like, you know, pieces like of that clothing that are that are, that are a part of the mask that's being created there. But really, this just helps refine the, the, the selection here really well. And I'll grab this tool here and get rid of some of the hair that's up here. Again, this is a, a lot of going back and forth between these tools. These tools are really powerful. And then we'll just zoom out here, okay? Now let's look around the dog. Looks like the dog is missing some side of him right here. So let's go ahead and just brush that along here, okay? Looking good. And now you see his hair there along the, the dog. If we grab the Refine Edge brush, make this really small, just start kind of painting along his hair. That's how we get that kind of stuff back. Okay. And then I'll zoom out here. And then for all intents and purposes, let's just go ahead and press OK. And I'll show you that this is going to give us a much better uh, selection. Now that we have this selection made, we can now make our mask. Okay. So now with our mask made, if we were to grab, uh, you know, let's let's say I've got this uh, Olympic National Park image I'm going to put behind them. So it looks like they're in the woods. I'll put that right behind them, just like that, underneath them. Now the direction of light um, looks all right. Now let's press Command Control T, flip and rotate this horizontal so that the light is coming from this side, almost as if it's going to be lighting them up. I know they'd be backlit, but you know what? It's enough to fool the viewer. Okay, so that looks pretty good. But if we were to go with the initial remove background on this, uh, let's see what would happen. So let's just make a duplicate layer of this. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and delete this mask. Okay. And then press remove background. If we were to remove that background and just put the Olympic National Park version underneath them, it's not going to look very good. If we did that, we would have to then crop them down to something like this to get rid of all the parts that Photoshop missed. So while the remove background feature is really awesome, uh, it is going to, uh, again, not going to get your flyaway hairs in there. So we're going to have to use some select subject and some select and mask in there. Um, and the other thing about it is it's not going to get all the little tedious spots that are in between hair. And that is why the best feature for you to use is going to be select subject and then select and mask. It's a little bit more work. Well, it's a lot more work, but you know what? You get a better product. Remove background, great. Love the wizardry that goes on in there to select the subject and then knock it out and give us a mask, but it's not always gonna be perfect and it's not gonna give you the best selection that you want for a realistic composite that you're creating. You're still gonna have to do that extra work, that extra labor in order to get that really good selection. So select subject and select and mask is gonna by far 
still be better than remove background. But it's really cool that we have this capability in Photoshop now. Again, my name is Blake Rudis. If you like this, please comment on it, like it, share it, and tell a friend. And, you know, tell me some of your stories. Are you liking this new remove background, or are you kind of like me, where you think it's cool, but it still needs a little bit of work in order for it to be powerful?